Hey everybody, it's Kenny with Generator Upgrade Supply. Today we're going to go over the installation of the Gen Extend Extended Run Fuel Kit. So let's head inside the garage because it's about 100 degrees out. Alright, first thing we're going to want to do is measure for our uh, fuel selector hole there. I'll just get a straight um, level or two by four or something. And then from there, measure down seven and a half inches, mark it. And then from the black case there, go over about an inch. I wish mine was a little bit more to the right because it sits at a little bit of an angle, but that's okay. Uh, so go over about an inch and you should be flat on this panel. Next thing, let's take off this side panel. I've already got it mostly undone. There's a few screws to take out. So there's one here. And then while you're over here, make sure the fuel selector is in the off position. There's two screws up top. There's three screws on the back and then there's three bolts on the front on the bottom right along here and they might be number 10 or number 8 depending on which style you have. All right, now that we have our panel taken off we can Look at the hole that is gonna go in this area here. So on the back, if you pull slowly and pull this away, and you can see, you're gonna drill here, but there is like an embossed circle on the top and bottom. That embossed circle is exactly where you wanna drill. And that's gonna be a half inch uh, so just drill straight through there. You're going to go through the plastic, and then you're going to hit the thin metal. So go straight through. Might have to be just a touch bigger than a half inch. And then on the front, where you measured, it's going to be a three-quarter inch, just slightly bigger than three-quarter inch. So go ahead and drill through that. That one's just plastic, so that one's pretty easy. Okay, let's work on getting our quick disconnect fitting in. These are all the parts you're going to need. So this is going to go straight through this hole. Okay, so we'll go, it's going to come pre-Teflon taped, so we'll go straight through that hole. Gonna wanna make sure the six-sided part of this bushing is facing towards the generator. Just put it directly over your threads. And then gonna thread the barb onto it. Start it with your hand. And then I found it easiest take some channel locks show you. and just grab the plastic on the outside of that as you take your it's either 5 8 or uh, use a monkey wrench and we're just gonna tighten that up so it's very snug Keep a good grip on those channel or the yeah, channel locks. All right, should be snug. Okay, now that's done. Let's work on putting.
putting the fuel selector in. So it's gonna come pre-labeled. This is gonna go to your aux barb right here. This one is gonna go directly to the carb. This one is gonna go to the stock um, fuel selector up here. Let me show you that real quick. So this is your stock fuel line coming from the fuel selector. And this is what you were gonna disconnect. It's just a spring clip. You're gonna take that off and connect it to the center line on the fuel selector here, labeled carb. So we'll do that now. All right, so I'm gonna take this spring clip off. If you can't do it with your hands, just use a pair of pliers. Like I said, it's going to the center one with the barb already on it. Push it in all the way. Put that spring clip back down. All right. Now, this aux is going to go to the new barb right here. that spring back down and the one labeled stock is going to go back up here where you took the stock fuel selector off I forgot to mention be a good idea to put a piece of a rag or something down just in case there's a little bit of um, fuel in this line when you take it off all right so stock is going to go back up here to the stock fuel selector. Just like that. Okay. Now, let's get that rag out of there. You can take these pieces of tape off if you'd like. I'll do that. So now we're gonna go through this three quarter inch hole. And you're gonna have a um, indicator. A is for aux, S is for stock. So it's going to go on like this. S is always going to be to the right. And when you're, I forgot to mention, when you're uh, installing this, the flat part, if you can see that, the flat part of this is going to be down. So this part is flat. So that's going to tell you that it's going to be down. So we'll go ahead and put that back in. Put our indicator with the S to the right. And then put the nut on. Make sure when you're tightening it that the S stays to the right. And then hand tightens fine. Just make sure that in the back here it's nice and level across. Okay, and then you're gonna have your knob. It's gonna face to the right. And it's just got a Phillips screw in there. If I can find 
it. Alright, and then there is a black cap that just pops back on there. Alright, now that's it for the hoses, the fuel selector, and the quick disconnect. I'm going to tell you a couple of things here. When you're putting it back in, make sure that these lines stay as level as possible. Um, that carb line, if it tries to angle up and it goes above the uh, fuel tank, there's a nut on the bottom of the fuel tank. It's got to stay below the nut or below the fuel tank and above the carb. Okay, it's a gravity feed system and it needs to be in that range. So if you need to, you can go on the other side here and let me show you what you can do. Okay, from here, if you take your um, charcoal canister out, you can look and see that's the line coming from the carb right there. You just grab it and give it a little, little nudge back here just to free up some of that slack. And this is the nut I was talking about. So it's gotta stay below this that level and above the carb level, which is Pretty much right about here. Okay, next is to do the fuel tank side. It's very self-explanatory, very easy. The only requirement is on the fuel tank that you have. It should have a female uh, quarter inch threaded, uh, called NPT, and then this shutoff valve will come with the kit pre-Teflon uh, taped. So screw that in there. Some of them, depending on how tight it is, you might have to take this um, handle off. And I think I had to take off this bottom screw right here um, just so I can easily twist it in there. Um, but then you're gonna have your quick disconnect. It'll come pre-Teflon taped, uh, thread that on in there, and you're done with the fuel tank side. All right, so last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is configure your hose. It's gonna come with the bulb and a fuel filter and about 10 feet of line. Uh, so plenty for most applications. Decide how, you know, where you wanna put the tank and then you can uh, cut the line so that it just has a nice gravity feed right in uh, try not to get a big loop there, make it nice and level, and then up to your tank. All right, so for operation, you're gonna turn the shutoff valve on, that's in line, and then give the bulb a couple of squeezes. You can see the fuel going into the fuel filter. All right, so you know that it's priming. And you'll only have to do this if you, you know, disconnect everything, take it, you know, put it in storage or anything like that. If it's just normal um, hooked up, then you shouldn't have to uh, prime it at all. All right, so just remember, right is for using the stock tank and flipping it to the left is going to use the auxiliary tank. And little trick, if you ever want to run the carb dry. If you're putting it in storage or something like that, just flip it to the up position and that shuts off both. So the generator will still run, but the fuel will run out of the carb and then stop the generator and you'll, uh, you won't have old fuel in your carb. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Just remember a portion of every sale goes to Veterans Charities and thank you for your support. And let me know if you have any questions. We're always here to help you generate better.